Hi everyone. Uh, today we're back with Equations of Lines 2. And so if you take a look at the screen, you'll see our title for today. What we're going to do is we're going to take everything that we did last time with Equations of Lines 1, and we're just going to build onto it. So what I want to do is I want to spend the first two problems today just giving ourselves a little bit of feedback as to how well the previous day went. So. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to copy down the instruction, question one, create the equation for the line for each. And in problem A, you need to come up with the equation of the line that is perpendicular to 5x plus y plus 2 equals 0 with a y-intercept of 4. Okay, so let's copy down that problem and let's try to build that equation. So let's pause the video now, go ahead and do that. Okay, and so we should be back. And so when we take a look, we know that in order to build the equation of the line, we need slope and one point. And if we're fortunate enough, then that information is given to us. Well, not quite. Like, we have a point. And we're told this information about being perpendicular to that line. Okay, we know that perpendicular slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So if I was to take that equation and get the y all by itself, then I can interpret my slope. So I can see then that the slope of that line is negative 5, and therefore the perpendicular slope would be positive 1 -fifth. Now, we love even more the fact that we were given a special point in that property. We were given the y-intercept. And so that's what allows us to jump straight to y equals, let's plug in our slope and our y-intercept, and we are good. So hopefully we matched up with A. Everything went pretty smoothly. We were pretty confident while we did it. Now we're going to try another one. So now I'd like you to take a look at B. We need to come up with the equation of the line that passes through that point, 3, negative 4, with a slope of negative 7. So just as before, I want us to work through and use this one as a gauge. Did we pick up the information we needed to from the previous day? So let's go ahead. Let's get a full solution to that one. Pause the video now. Okay, and so we're back. So I'm going to put down two solutions to this one because we could have solved this one either way. So maybe we start off and we say that we know our slope coordinate formula. You never have to show me this blue. You can show me just the purple. Sub in your slope and sub in your one point. Now that's not a form of a line, so therefore I have to get rid of my divide by x minus 3. Again, you don't have to show me this blue. You could go straight to the purple and expand that negative 7 in. And now maybe we rearrange it, and we either have y equals negative 7x plus 17, or we put it into standard form, because maybe we liked that from yesterday. We thought of everything going in this way, and we finished off with a 7x plus y minus 17 equals 0. So maybe we have what you see on the left there. Know that if you did give me that solution, you only have to give me one of those equations, obviously not both and you would only have to show me the purple as part of your solution. Okay, if we didn't go to that, then maybe we used y equals mx plus b to build that equation. And so maybe in this solution in the purple, we then said that we replaced our y with negative 4, our slope with negative 7, we subbed in 3. Now we were able to calculate that and we got a b value of 17. And therefore, we went through and we wrote our equation, y equals, plug in your slope and your y-intercept. We probably wouldn't have written that in standard form because it was so easy to get slope-intercept.
Now, okay, so hopefully that matches up with what you had on the page, one of those two solutions. And if it did, then that should give you a pretty good gauge as to what you have from the previous lesson. If we don't match up and it was like a silly little calculation error, then we're not concerned. But if it was some pretty good theory mistakes, that is, we weren't sure where to go with something, that's telling us that maybe we're not ready for today's topic and that we've got to spend some time on the previous day again. Okay, let's jump into something a little different. Okay, so when we take a look at problem C, we need to build the equation of a line that's passing through point C at negative 1, 4, and point D at 3, 9. Okay, before we dive into the problem, are we good that there can only be one line that passes through those two points? Like, we're good that it's not possible for different lines to pass through those points. So, if I was to go through and put on a quick set of axes and to estimate and say, okay, well, point C would be over here at like negative 1, 4, so maybe like there. And point D would be at 3, 9, so up there. That there is only one possible line that could pass through those points. That if I was to try to draw multiple lines that could pass through those points, I'd have to like curve it back around a little bit. And as soon as I curve it, then it's no longer a line. So as long as we can acknowledge that if we have two points and there's only one possible line, then I think that that's a good starting point. So your job then is to come up with the equation for the line that would pass through those two points. Okay, I want to walk through this one together because this is the smallest possible extension from yesterday's stuff. Biggest thing that we need to have in our back pocket what information do we need to be able to build the equation of a line? We need slope and we need a point. And I want you to notice that you actually have two points that were given. So that takes care of the point. We actually have more information than what we need. However, we were not given slope. And we weren't given any other information, like that it was parallel to another line or perpendicular to another line. So we don't have the means to be able to just find slope through that process. That what you're going to see today is one of the other reasons why I like to use my slope coordinate formula to build the equations of my lines. If we're missing slope, then couldn't we just calculate slope? That is, can't you always calculate slope if you have two points? And so our first step then, and I'm just going to shrink this down a little so we have more room to work, would be why don't we go and find the slope? And so you're going to see some extra notation here that I'm going to find the slope, and I put in a little subscript to show that I'm finding the slope of CD. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to, oops, just erase that red arrow so we don't have any confusion. I am going to calculate the slope of CD. So what I'd like you to do is to go through and find the slope of CD. So let's pause the video. <clears throat> okay, we're back. So, maybe in my mind, I'm going to subtract in that direction. So I'm going to have 9 minus 4, my y minus my y, over my x minus my x. Subtracting in the same direction, there's my rise over run. And when I calculate that, I get my 5 fourths. Now, you may have calculated your slope differently, but we still got to get down to that same value. We should match up on 5 fourths. Well, I just want you to notice that I can kind of get rid of that question mark now. Underneath the slope, I actually have slope now. I have all the information I need. So we're going to build the equation of our line. Okay, as I said, we're going to do this one together. All the hard work's been done. 
I just want to show you one big thing that we can now use, maybe in green, the slope and point C to build the equation of the line. So my slope equals, and I can sub my slope and my point into my slope coordinate formula. Okay, we should be a lot more comfortable to be able to expand in the 5 to x plus 1 and expand, oops, that's a pretty messy y, the 4 into y minus 4. And now I can go ahead and, you know, I think I just want to go standard form because standard form is going to be more direct. So my x value is positive on the left side, so I want to keep that over there. So I'm going to go through and move everything to the left side, which means I have to get rid of a plus 4y, so I have a minus 4y, get rid of a minus 16, so I add 16. And there we go. Now, before anybody thinks, like, but which point do I have to use? Like, do I have to use C? You do not need to use C at all. Like, I'm going to go through now, and my purple solution will be me using slope and point D. That maybe what I said was my slope equals Y minus 9 over X minus 3. I sub my slope and point D into my slope formula. Okay, well now I can multiply that out. So let's expand in the 5 and expand in the 4. Well, same thing. I take a peek at that, and I notice that my x value is positive over here. So I like that for standard form. So I'm going to picture moving everything over to the left. And to get rid of a minus 36 means I need to add 36. And we come in there. Notice that my equation is the same regardless of which point I use. So let me be honest with you that in this instance, I probably would have dealt with the purple solution if I was to go through and deal with this. Because just notice that your purple points, your coordinates on point D are both positive. So I wouldn't be concerned about making that silly little sign mistake that we may have made in our green solution. But as you can see, both of them get us down to the same thing. I could see some people making a really good argument to use point C because the numbers were smaller. And so it made your calculations a little easier. The biggest takeaway from this solution, it doesn't matter which point we use. So pick one and work through and solve. So the fact that we were given only two points is really no big deal. With two points, you have the ability to calculate slope. Now you have slope and two points. Feel free to jump in and create your equation. Okay, let's try another one. I want you to take a look at D. I want you to build the equation of the line passing through E, which is at negative 2, negative 3, and F, which is at 5, negative 12. Okay, I think we should actually be able to go start to finish on this one. So I want you to go through and build the equation of the line passing through EF. Okay, pause the video now. Okay, we're back. So we recognize that what information we need is slope and a point. We have two points. That means we need to find our slope. So we're going to calculate the slope of EF. And so in that instance, I'm going to take one of my y values and subtract the other one, and then that same x value and subtract the other. So in my red, I was thinking about subtracting in that direction. Okay, what does that get me? Well, then that gets me a negative 9 on top and over 7. So I should have found that my slope for EF was negative 9 sevenths. Now, if we made a mistake in our slope, 
then I want to give everybody who did a chance to kind of get back on track and try to find that equation. So if you did make a mistake, pause the video, go through and try to build the equation. Otherwise, we're going to keep going through and build the equation. Now, I'm only going to do this once. I don't think we need to do both. And I think that I'm going to choose point E just because the numbers were smaller. So for me to go through and build my equation, then I know that my slope is going to equal y minus negative 3 over x minus negative 2. Now that's not a form of a line I recognize, so now I need to multiply it out. I'm going to expand in my negative 9 to my x plus 2. There is my multiply out. And then expand in my 7 to my y plus 3. There is my multiply out. I get to that instance. Now maybe I go slope intercept form for this equation. So I want to get my y all by itself. So I've got my 7y, I have my negative 9x. For me to get rid of this plus 21, I need to minus 21. So I have negative 18 minus another 21 gives me negative 39. And now to get that y all by itself, I have to get rid of my times by 7. So I divide by 7 on all terms on the other side. And there we go. So hopefully we match up on that one, and we're pretty good. Okay, what I want to do is I want to tackle one more example. And what I'm going to challenge you guys with in this example is, I want you to imagine that this problem is a race. Okay, it's a race. And whoever can build the correct equation of the line as fast as possible wins. Okay, so we're not looking for particulars. Like, I'm actually looking for speed in this problem. You just make sure, though, that your solution would allow the person sitting next to you, if they were to read it, to understand what you did. Okay, here comes our last problem. So, I want you to build the equation of the line that has an x-intercept of negative 5 and a y-intercept of negative 2. Okay, pause the video, go as fast as you can go. Okay, we're back. So what I want to show you with this one is maybe this is a quick way that if you're ever given intercepts and how you can deal with it. I know that intercepts are important points on graphs. It's where they hit each axis. So maybe to put on a quick sketch and say that I have an x-intercept of negative 5 and a y-intercept at negative 2, we could see that this line, and that's a really bad straight edge on the iPad, would go through those two points. Now I really don't like where my label of negative 2 is. So I'm going to try to connect those. I don't know if I made this picture worse, but there we go. X-intercept at negative 5, Y-intercept at negative 2. That I'm going to have a bunch of people that could just look at that diagram right now. And just remember that the goal I put in your mind was to go as fast as you could. Well, for us to build the equation of a line, we still need slope and a point. But on that picture, we might be able to see our slope. Because you were given the intercepts, I now would go to the right 5 and down 2. That we can pretty quickly see on the diagram that your slope would be negative 2 fifths. Well, you've been given the y-intercept. So therefore, y equals negative 2 fifths x minus 2. And a quick sketch is what enables us to get that solution as fast as possible. Now, I don't know how many people got that. And I'm not talking about the equation. We should match up with that equation by now. But I mean that they didn't use a picture to get it. 
Okay, I'm going to go through a longer method that I think quite a few people would have done. That we can look at our x-intercept, and if we go through the point, sorry, an x-intercept of negative 5, well, then that really means that there's the point negative 5, 0. And if we go through the point, the y-intercept of negative 2, then that really means that the coordinates of that point are 0, negative 2. That I would have had some people who looked at that and said, hey, you gave me two points, just like before. So I'm going to calculate slope. And maybe we have negative 2 minus 0 over 0 plus 5. And you're just going to sub those coordinates into your slope formula. So we get a negative 2 fifths that way. And now we should be able to go, okay, there's my slope. You gave me the y-intercept. The only thing that I think you really would have had the blinders on with would have been if you then, after calculating slope in green, went, okay, negative 2 fifths equals, and then you picked one of your points like we just went through, like y plus 2 over x minus 0 Yikes. But I would have had a bunch of people give me the purple. Notice it's not difficult. It's just time consuming. It's not difficult, but because of the amount of work you have to write down, it just opens you up to silly little mistakes. So maybe just something a little different for us to consider whenever we're given a situation where we've been given both intercepts. Sometimes putting on a sketch is actually the most efficient way to get there. Okay, regardless, I hope we matched up. And now all we need to do is to get a bunch of practice at building the equations of lines when given two points. Okay, jump in and get some practice. Good luck.